Good morning and welcome to worship at Our Savior's Lutheran Church. As you can see, I'm not at Our Savior's Lutheran Church this morning. I'm self-quarantining at home, but I wanted to contribute to our worship services this weekend by greeting you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and welcoming you to our service and reminding you of one of the great warnings and great invitations and promises of the Word of God as we begin our worship. The Word of God says that if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is now in us. But if we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So let's take a moment to pause and remember the ways that we have sinned in our relationship with God and others as we continue our worship. God is faithful and he made a promise that if you were honest with him and confessed your sins, he would be faithful and forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. So having been reconciled with the Lord, hear the word of peace that he gives to your heart. And I invite you to take a moment and receive that peace into your heart. I also invite you to share that peace with those who you might be worshiping with this morning. Blessings to you as we share this time together in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Today's Gospel reading comes from the Gospel of John, the 10th chapter. Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. 
When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. Jesus used this figure of speech with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they might have life and have it abundantly. The Gospel of our Lord. Amen. Grace to and peace this day from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. So I'm sitting in the pews and I'm doing this for a reason. Today is the fourth Sunday of Easter and often this Sunday is known as the Good Shepherd Sunday. It's when all of our texts really revolve around Jesus being the Good Shepherd. If you look at our gospel text, which comes out of the Gospel of John, it's the first 10 verses in the Gospel of John, chapter 10. We talk about this entry into who Jesus is as our Good Shepherd, and it begins with the gate. Today's text is as much for us as individuals as it is for a community. And especially now, I really want us to think about what it means to be a community, the, the community that Jesus calls us to be. But first, let's take a look at what it means to be a shepherd. In ancient times, shepherds were a very common uh, industry. A lot of people were shepherds. If they couldn't become a rabbi, they became a shepherd. And if they couldn't become a shepherd, they became a fisherman. There was a certain purpose that you were drawn into. Shepherds had an incredibly important role because they had to protect the lambs, both for the sake of food and for the sake of offering. Shepherds would often, because they were in these open valleys and these pastures, they would often gather several different herds together and they'd create a community in which they protected each other. They cared for one another. Shepherding was incredibly dangerous. There were thieves and there were bandits. There were predator animals. It was a hard life, but it was also simple and beautiful. When the shepherds would gather all of the sheep together, what the fascinating thing that would happen was the sheep would only know the voice of their particular shepherd. So it didn't matter how many herds were gathered together, one sheep knew its shepherd. And so if there was another shepherd speaking, it would ignore it unless it was their shepherd. So Jesus uses this image for us to better understand what it means to be his people. I think what I love most about this text is that Jesus really is both the good shepherd and also the lamb. He's one of the sheep. He was the paschal lamb. He was the lamb that was slain for us. He was our sacrifice who suffered and died and rose that we would be promised eternal life. Jesus knows what it means to be both the sheep and the shepherd. This is where I'm reminded that we have a God who knows us. We have a God who knows our anxiety. We have a God who knows what we fear. We have a God who walked in this world, who struggled with the powers of this world. We have a God who wept, who got angry, who's been all the places that we've been. And in this text, we remember that we have a God who knows us and claims us as his own. So as we ponder this Good Shepherd, how does this text, especially now, how does this text speak to us? Because I don't know about you, but I need something concrete. I don't want any more estimations or forecasts. 
I don't want any more suggestions of what it's going to be like. I want something that I can hold on to right this minute and know for certain that God is in the midst of this. And what we have is the Good Shepherd. Jesus says in the first seven verses, I am the gate. Sometimes this is better translated as I am the door. To know Jesus, to have a life with Christ, means to go through him. There's only one way in. There's only one way out, and it is through Christ. Jesus says, I am the gate. There's only one way to come to me. But when we go through that door, when we go through that gate, we know that he knows us. Isn't that what we want in faith? Don't we want to both be known and to know what faith is all about? Jesus says, I am the gate. All who come to me will find pasture and rest. When Jesus allows us to enter in through him, he names us and claims us as his own. Remember, the sheep know the voice of the shepherd. It's a powerful idea. And not only do we come into a community or come into Christ, but we come into a community, a community that is centered on him. That's the beautiful thing about this text. No matter where you are worshiping right in this moment, you are worshiping together with me. We're all in the same community. The sheepfold just got a whole lot bigger in our understanding because Christ has called us together. He has joined us. We have an identity through him because he is our shepherd. And we also have a purpose to live together in that fold as one big herd of his people. When you have been named and when you have been claimed, you hear his voice in a new way. And just like the text reminds us that when you hear the voice of your shepherd, you stop hearing all of the other voices. You don't know them anymore. You don't listen to them anymore. I've been thinking about this text and I've been thinking of how COVID just feels like a thief and a bandit. Hasn't it really felt like COVID has stolen precious moments of our time, gatherings that we were looking forward to, plans that we had made? Doesn't it feel like COVID's a bit of a bandit, bandit trying to take away our purpose and our identity? But Jesus says, it can't. My sheep know my voice. They know me. Because your purpose is grounded in who Christ has made you to be. Your identity is spoken loudly in a voice that calls to you and says, you aren't alone. Think about that. It doesn't matter how isolated you feel right now. It doesn't matter what your state of self-quarantining is or how little human contact you have had. You have a shepherd that speaks through this text to say, listen to me, you aren't alone. You are part of a community that cannot be bound by anything other than Jesus. As we listen for the voice of the shepherd, I wonder, do you hear him? Do you hear him speaking to you that you are loved, that you are loved and you are cared for? That while life doesn't feel like it should be, it is a life that is abundant in him. Do you hear that voice? Because in faith, we are his sheep gathered together. And I love that I'm sitting in the sanctuary, but I'm not alone in it. Even though the appearance may seem that I am, I'm not alone. Because this sanctuary has been extended to your home. It's been extended to your living room, 
to your kitchen table. This church now is in your homeschool. It's present in all of the things that you are doing because you are part of the sheepfold, the sheepfold that Christ has established among us. Don't fall for the lie that life can be snatched away. Don't fall for the voices of this world that try to convince us that we don't have a purpose or an identity right now because we can't gather together as we're used to. Don't listen to that voice because that voice is not the voice of your shepherd. The voice of your shepherd is inviting you to come. Come and gather. Come and be the people I have called you to be. Come and remember that I am both your shepherd and your lamb, the one who was slain to redeem you, and not only to give you life, but give you abundant life. For that we say thanks be to God. Amen. And it told thy love to me But I long to rise in the arms of faith And be closer drawn to thee Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord To the cross where thou hast died thy precious bleeding side. Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord, by the power of grace divine. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope and my will be lost in thine. Draw me nearer, nearer, blessed Lord, to the cross where thou hast died. Draw me nearer, 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 blessed Lord, to thy precious bleeding side. Lord, 
to thy gracious, precious sight, to thy precious, bleeding sight. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Holy and mighty God, we give you thanks for this beautiful day that you have given to us. For this chance to be together, even though we're apart in our spirits, we are united with you. Bless our worship, Lord, as we come to you and we lift up every worry and fear, every hope and dream that we have. We thank you that you hear our prayers. We thank you that you have the love and the power to help us in every need and in every circumstance that we bring before you today. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father in heaven, we lift up our congregational family and our community for those whose names and needs that we know and that we can join together in sharing with you. Father, we continue our prayers for Bobby McGrew, for Sharon Geyer's daughter, Wendy, for Rachel Watillo, for Linda Murray, for Jerry Rislow, for Ruth Peters, for Don and Nancy Miller's daughter, Sally, for Deb Brofflot's brother, Conrad, for Peggy Norris's husband, Royce. For Victoria Brown's sister, Marcia. For Tony Chrissy. For Dennis Pofall. For Ardith Rasmussen. For Cynthia Johnson. And for her daughter, Kim. Father, you know each one of their needs and we pray that you would touch them and comfort them with your power of love and peace and healing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for those who are grieving, and we ask, Lord, that you would give comfort and that you would give strength, that you would give peace. And in the midst of grief, Lord, we pray that your message of the resurrection of your Son would bring hope to all who grieve. We pray especially today for Dixie Storaker at the death of her husband, Don. And we lift up to you, Ryan Robin and his family at the passing of his father, Neil. Comfort all who grieve with the sure and certain hope of everlasting life through our Lord Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, we again come before you and we lift up our community, our state, our nation, and our world. And we ask, Lord, for your healing, that this disease would pass from us quickly, that you would protect and heal those who are sick, that you would protect those who are vulnerable, that this virus would come no near, near their bodies or their homes. We pray, Lord, for everyone who is working to help we pray for those who are taking risks to serve us at grocery stores, as truck drivers, as the deliver, those who deliver the things that we need to keep and sustain our lives. We pray for first responders, for police officers and firefighters. We pray for the people who work in our hospitals and are caring for those who are the most sick. Protect them, Lord, encourage them, bless them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Next we'll be singing number 370, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. Yeah. 
Thank you for worshiping with us this morning. It's so good to be together. Even though we're not in person, we're united with the Holy Spirit. It's my privilege to share with you the word of blessing from the Holy Word of Scripture. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your week. Stay in peace and serve the Lord. Amen.